So Bitcoin is down over 1% today. Let's dig into everything that's happening surrounding Bitcoin and why the price is falling like it is. Let's do it. So we're going to start here on coin market cap the total market cap of crypto globally is down 0.90 percent at the time of recording and stands at a whopping 1.64 trillion dollars bitcoin is at 42,855.46, down 1.34 percent in the past 24 hours look bitcoin has seen a bit of a volatile kind of few weeks since the bitcoin spot etf you know was approved we've kind of seen this move to the downside and this is something that we forecast on this channel this is something that we were talking about in the lead up to the approval we've said it was inevitable and look you know we're in this position now where i kind of feel that you know we're going to see some real issues with banks particularly regional banks in the US, potential bailouts uh, for banks and the inevitable Fed pivot. And we're going to come on to this in more detail later in this video. So stick around because you don't want to miss out on this stuff. This is true alpha content. Right, let's get into the first headline. We've got Bitcoin's ETF sees $700 million net inflows as BlackRock Fidelity gains offset G. BTC outflows. So look, what we do need to highlight to everybody is, you know, we ex expected and forecast this sell off when it came to, you know, the approval of the Bitcoin spot ETF. And um, we said that, you know, this was likely to happen that was mainly down to, to grayscale. Um, but not only that, you know, the, the macro landscape is not looking too uh, good right now as well with, you know, potential war and all this stuff going on in the world. It's not looking particularly juicy. Um, but there is 7.7 billion dollars worth of bitcoin that is tied up in the bitcoin spot etfs and this is growing so look uh, i want to kind of say that this is short-term volatility in the market right and I, I do expect a crash both in crypto and stocks when the fed pivot but i think that that's going to be over a, a short period of time so i think the fed will pivot everything will crash and it will be over really, really quickly. And I think then we are in the recovery phase of, you know, the market cycle. And in this recovery phase, we're going to move on to the upside into the bull run. And this is something that we are really excited about. So I hope that people kind of understand what we're saying. Um, we're not bearish on this channel. We're really, really bullish. But we're very realistic uh, in our expectations and, our, um, you know, thoughts as to where we are now and I think I'd rather be honest and upfront with people and maybe ahead of the curve maybe we're talking about things too early we started talking about this stuff and the Fed pivot you know almost a year maybe longer than a year ago explaining that you know we're gonna see some fantastic opportunities still in this market and I still have money on the sidelines so I want to be really clear on that um but, you know, if we're wrong, we've still been dollar cost averaging as well. And, you know, you need to hedge. You know, it's all about, you know, your risk management and your risk appetite. So, yeah, interesting stuff. We've got Wisdom Tree bets on advisor adoption for Bitcoin ETF success. So a new spot um, funds. Wisdom Tree has... Um, basically attracted the lower amount or the lowest amount of uh, AUM at roughly $12.8 million. But what they are saying is more um, advisory kind of roles and stuff like that is really where the adoption is going to come from. Look, we've kind of said that, you know, there's going to be some of these funds that don't exist in a year, two years time, and they will just be eaten up by the big players in this space. Ultimately, uh, I think there's room for all different levels of you know investment firms companies uh when it comes to these bitcoin spot etfs it's all about you know staying within your your company's range um and and you know growing right and i think that's going to happen over time so here we've got uh bitmex co-founder arthur hayes sees bitcoin price hitting one million dollars 
on bank bailouts. So look, I mentioned earlier that regional banks in the US and I think regional banks in general are struggling. A lot of these banks, particularly in the US, are not backed, which means that your money is at risk. So, you know, you probably want to move from regional banks and get your money in, you know, the bigger banks that are covered by you know, the, the, the government, right? And your money's backed. Here, here in the UK, most of our money's backed to a certain point. So, you know, we don't have the same sort of concerns as, you know, perhaps you have in, um, let's say, the US. But I think he's right. I think there will be bailouts. I think that, you know, this banking crisis that we're going into is going to basically be the catalyst for the Fed to, to pivot. Basically, we're waiting for things to get so bad that the Fed do their pivot. Once that happens all the crashes, you know, some bankruptcies and, and all that sort of stuff will happen. And then we'll come out of it, you know, better the other end. And um, I do think that, you know, historically over, you know, time, these uh, crashes have got shorter and shorter. So I just want to put that out there. I think the sooner it happens, the better when it comes to wanting a bullish, you know, crypto market. Because uh, afterwards, I think that all these assets are going to be, you know, worth a lot more. But you know, with that said, people don't understand what is actually happening here. So let me try to articulate it a little bit so people get more of a grasp of what's actually going on and why I expect this crash. You know, there's many people that have been um, eating up the uh, inflation and the inflation that is, you know, publish, uh, published and, and put out there in the media is not true inflation. It's much higher. You know, it depends on the individual and not just the basket of assets that they put out and, and uh, air on, on the media. Um, you know, it's much higher and um, it can be very different for, for different individuals and circumstances. But, you know, Interest rates as well with banks, you're hearing the media talk about, you know, the, the interest rates are coming down. They're still much higher than um, what people have been paying, right? So they might have come down from maybe, let's say, hypothetically speaking, plucking figures out of the air, 6% down to 4%. Well, you know, the fixed mortgage uh, that most people are coming off are, are like 2 2.5%. So they're still having to pay double in interest, uh, sometimes more. So, like... It's not a saving. Um, it's still an additional cost. And and this is uh, with remortgages still happening uh, X amount every single month. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands. Um, you know, people are, are seeing um, their disposable income go to zero. And bearing in mind, most people work from paycheck to paycheck. They're now, you know, if they weren't already uh, with inflation the way it is, they're, they're, they're really challenged. So we are going to see retail having to sell off uh, crypto. We are going to have to see that all happen. And uh, yeah, I think it's just a matter of time before we get that crash and it's the final one and, and things sort of pick up and we start seeing stimulus and money printing and all this sort of stuff, particularly heading into wars and stuff like that. I think that this is all good for, for assets in the longer term. Moving on, we've got AI-generated fake IDs claim to pass crypto exchange KYC are selling for uh, as little as $15. I'm not going to go into this uh, in too much detail because I don't want people doing it. Um, but yeah, look, you could probably get into a lot of trouble, so stay clear. But interesting to know that's happening. Uh, veteran trader Tone um, says he's become super bullish on Bitcoin once BTC starts closing above 48 k Um Sorry, above 40, 40k. It, it, it here start to, to to get really bullish on that. That's really interesting. Um, we got China will never completely ban crypto. I'm completely aligned to this. We've seen them ban it so many times, uh, but they won't really. Um, Binance to delist uh, Monero privacy token. Uh, again, really interesting to see this play. What I would say is we need a really good privacy layer for masking and unmasking transactions. This will lead to mass adoption. We won't get that without a decent privacy layer, so start researching them. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, mash up the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and give this video a watch if you want to stay up to date on everything that's happening in the crypto space. Take care. I'll catch you in the next one.